so hello everyone uh welcome to the session uh let me introduce myself my name is zaid pradhan and i am a volunteer in the ops community uh i like i am uh, pursuing my masters in cyber security uh let me and i will be uh, moderating this session uh during next 45 minutes 45 50 minutes you will be listening to uh you will be listening to antara so let me quickly introduce her to you all so antara is a passionate information network security professional and a cyber security researcher she enjoys the opportunity that he works and gives her in this area cyber security awareness uh, she has been to different uh, like cyber security awareness play trainer at uh, secure nessus lead uh, also she has been a speaker and a trainer at infosec uh, girls and infosec diversity mumbai uh, she is also a technical blogger and a writer uh, she is she also does the international freelancing auditing the and information security uh, specialist and all that stuff uh, so the topic for uh, today is breaking what is it so uh, antara uh, over to you uh, can you please just share your screen yeah thank you thank you zain now let me just quickly share my screen uh please let me please let, let me know once my screen is visible yeah it's visible yeah so uh welcome everyone and uh, today we're going to discuss something called as breaking and pressing application i'm so sorry uh, i'm i just have to turn off my video because i'm just facing some technical challenges in my audio today right? so just going to stay offline there and let's just begin so i think the introduction part has been covered by zeb uh, thank you for that zeb and uh, So my agenda for today's, uh, you know, session is to have an, uh, you know, in deep, uh, in depth information about application security aspect, the need for application security, right? So then we even also cover what is software composition analysis, why it is required, how it is done at a global level, and how organizations are adopting to this particular, you know, uh, uh, analysis tool and everything, right? And then we're going to have a short discussion on what is attack surface monitoring and why it is becoming a literally boom in the IT world all over the world, right? So we're going to cover cover these four topics for today's sessions, and let's just begin. So before we head on to what is application security, why it is important, and everything, so I just wanted to uh, like have like introduce what is in in uh, like this is basically an information a security architecture, right? So the reason I'm just presenting it is to just give you an over overview of the layers. that are there in an infosec uh, information security right so like about a decade ago cyber security had an uh, inviable task right given the small number of devices they had to just protect a very least minimum devices right so the job was like pretty simple right but if you would see in today's world right so the use of digital technologies in the work environment is increasing the sharply due to the need of the for the enterprises to become more adaptable and agile right so it creates a surging number of cyber attackers who can use to gain access to the information and data right so here the traditional security isn't enough as the threats are becoming more and more complex right so as the global cyber battlefield has dramatically evolved it is good to get a high level of 
ideology of what the cyber security architecture looks like and before we even you know talk about the security aspect the security posture of it let's just understand the deep layers of how one should you know take a look at right and that 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 particular area needs more like better security than the other areas of it, right the security now affects everyone right earlier it was like solely uh, you know a responsibility for it department right but in today's world security increases interaction between departments to identify what needs to be protected thus reducing the uh, reducing the impact of any unexpected future attack right cyber security is also stretches it reach out to the edge where data is moving the target the targeted data generated by iot held on lot of mobile devices or the data that is generated stored and accessed in the cloud right so this particular information security architecture it does includes network security it does include uh, data security application layer security endpoint security network security perimeter security and then there are other assets as well that are been marked in a ter ter territory of critical assets like the operations part monitoring and response the policy man management and the prevention of it right so the basically uh, the primary goal of this uh, of a bona fide cyber security architectures are to ensure that all the cyber attack surfaces are minimized hidden and dynamic and all the sensitive confidential and classified data is strongly encrypted at rest right and all the cyber attacks are aggressively detected mitigated and countered moving target defenses with aggressive counter measures are strongly encrypted right so the cyber security uh, architecture it is uh, the established the establishment of it it needs an adaptive security architecture so it's a valuable framework to help enterprises classify all the potential and existing security investments to determine uh, whether they are deficient to make make sure that there's a balanced approach to cyber security or not right so just for an example uh, if um, if a if a competent military commander needs to fully, sorry yeah yeah just uh, can you just uh, slow it down a little bit because uh, you are not clearly audible Okay. Okay. So, just for example, uh, just let me know if it if it's better if I'm sounding better. So, say for example, if there is a competent military commander who needs to have a full understanding of different kinds of terrain and the weak points of his forces to effectively defend his or her troops and the ter territory, right? So, a savvy cybersecurity architect uh, architect needs to thoroughly understand different network topologies. and cyber attack uh, the uh, attack surfaces to efficiently mitigate the vulnerabilities and defend each and every layer of it which contains sensitive data and the critical applications so over to the first layer we have perimeter security right that does include the set of physical and technical security and programmatic policies that provide levels of protection against remote malicious activity which are used to and protect the backend systems as well from unauthorized access when appropriately configured the perimeter defense security model can prevent data absorption and data attacks thus reducing the risk to critical backend systems over the next we have network security layer this particular layer that partitions the border hello hello yeah, and uh, your voice is breaking can you please just uh, mute and unmute again Uh, let me put this thing back. So we were talking about network security. It's still the same. Let me. No, like your voice is breaking. Uh, you are not able to listen you clearly. Okay. Hello, is it is it any better? Yeah, it's better now. Okay, so we were talking about network security. So this particular layer that has a partitions, uh, the broader network of assets and connections into enclaves. So an enclave is a distinctly bounded area enclosed within a larger unit. Right? 
enclaves incorporate the individual access controls and protection mechanisms. So a network security layer when appropriately used can prevent damages to travel from one enclave to others. And it can also set policies of accesses specific to the enclaves, right? So it does include see if it does include a couple of uh, access control defined mechanism that we usually see at an organization's level, right? So the proxy for filtering, we uh, to basically control the user uh, internet browsing, right? And then there are other encryption and digital certificate authorization to allow access whenever a user or any employee wants to access certain uh, website or any 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 anything that wishes to browse on the internet. Right? Let's head on to the next layer that is enforced security. So security protection mechanisms and control that reside directly on an endpoint device. Right? So that, that does include uh, laptops, computers, mobile devices, tablets, etc., which has an interface in any network or system included within uh, the on-premises. Right? So it does, it does basically uh, include wireless NAT or DLT. Content security, like anti antivirus, um, anti malware, right? Configuration compliance. So configuration compliance that, uh, like, it comes into picture when when an organization does not wish to have an internal access for any outsider or a visitor, right? So it has like a basic validation onto the internal network. So if any external device wants to come into the network, like get connected into the network using an Ethernet cable, or maybe using an access point, or maybe over a Wi-Fi, right? So having that MAC address validation, there comes the compliance, uh, configuration compliance part, right? So without having an appropriate validations, and external devices are not allowed to be connected into an on-premises network, right? And then there are VPN client is built to ensure that there is no connectivity for any for any user is secure. Right? So let's show that layer is application security layer. So this particular layer, uh, like, like security protection mechanisms and controls that are embedded within the applications, the side hey, of Mara, the network. Your, your connection is getting um, poor again. Would it be possible if I take over a screen share and we have you call back in and we can uh, restart where you just left off? Oh, sure, sure. Okay, please check the chat. Um, we'll be right back, folks. Um, and, and Tara will finish her presentation. Thank you.
And Tara, if you can see. Yep. Yeah. Can you please put up slide number four? Hello? Which slide would you like me to go to? Slide number four. Slide four is showing when you're ready. Uh, so we were discussing on uh, the application security, right? Um, so the security protection mechanisms uh, and controls that are embedded within the applications residing on the network in place and the endpoint devices. So for example, uh, applications could be like MS software, uh, ERT applications, some mobile apps, some or organizations own property uh, applications, right? So uh, it is very essential when it comes to application security part because uh, most of the cyber attack that has been that has happened right so 83 percent of that has been because of application security right and the weaknesses in application security uh was of like you know hello yeah sorry uh, hello? sorry the slide is not changed the, the slides yeah yeah now it's changed yeah, yes, yeah. okay Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, the weaknesses in the access control, right? The LAM the LAM access and uh, you know, not having appropriate other security control, the DLC pops part, right? Having uh, some weak secret management, right? Having a poor code, uh, you know, uh, uh, writing practices and not following uh, the appropriate, you know, uh, uh, some some validations on subject and object metrics level, right? That could cause uh, an unauthorized, I mean, that basically leads to unauthorized access to certain sensitive data, right? Lack of having an MFA in place, so on and so forth, right? So we're gonna cover more in the upcoming slides. So let's, let's, let, 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 let's move on to the next layer that is the data security layer. So this particular layer, this is a layer of the security that protects data in the enterprise, regardless of the data state, right? That is whether it is in motion or at rest or in use, right? So the so, so the key aspects in data security is to have appropriate backup in place, right? Regularly backup, uh, data backup procedures, uh, data backup testing, the restoration part of it, right? And uh, the server of where the data has been backed up, whether that particular server falls under the appropriate security guidelines, whether it has an appropriate network security layers in place and other protections as well, right? The access to the server. And then there are, you know, other, if, if say, for example, there is there is a policy that also, you know, have, have you asked to erase the data after a certain intervals of time, right? So if that has not been, you know, in taken in, taken in account or by, you know, by any, any misconfiguration by the, from the IT team or maybe some other, responsible persons, right? If that is not being placed, right? So data backup, it could be a possibility, but due to some of the other people's misconfiguration, that particular endpoint being leaked onto the internet, and then the, an attacker could get a hold of it. So for example, recently I was just doing a testing on one of the applications, right? So I found a zip, I mean, a backup file in a zip format, right? Which was, you know, easily accessible. I just had to, you know, brute force it. And like, and the keywords were like pretty, you could you could brute force it like very easily using uh, the OAPS tool, right? That's that that's that's used for you know brute forcing the endpoint URLs for having the dynamic uh, you know URLs that are you know could could be easily configured uh, from from the IT persons, right? So that that was the one case. So I was easily uh, you know able to download all the backup files, and then in the in the backup file there were a couple of other sensitive data as well. In which I found one of the web config files that contains pretty sensitive hard coded credentials, tokens, and AWS keys. Right. So having these kinds of data hard coded within a config file, right? It, you, you can just imagine the damage it could cause to the uh, to the organization. Having AWS access key and then secret key. One can easily just gain CLI access to it if the keys and secret keys are 
active right so 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 the data security part is like pretty important you i mean there should be a classification of like what like what what sort of data is like very critical to you which needs more attention which needs more you know security for it right and you need to have your priorities defined and then you know act according to it right uh, so let let's just let's move on to the next layer of it so which is called as a prevention layer also lies uh, which is to the uh, left of the screen so in this in this layer so this is achieved by the policies procedures uh, training uh, also uh, by performing a threat modeling uh, risk assessments uh, penetration testing and all the other inclusive sustainment activities to improve a security posture right so there are i mean we we have we have been through couple of you know terminology here for example red teaming uh, red teaming of uh, penetration testing right having a thorough review of security architecture and design uh, also threat modeling is like key uh, term, term to you you all might have you know aware of so basically all all these prevention measures is like just to ensure like how how big or smaller attack surface is uh, right the posture is and then seeing if one or the other uh, you know open end point leads to some severe attack right so that 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 in case of red teaming penetration testing we just find one or the other instance which we which we could escalate it to a severe attack right so there were couple there are a couple of examples with me uh, so i'll just move on just go ahead with this one example that was of ssrs so there was this uh, banking application uh, so it had a, like you we all know right if you want to purchase an insurance for us or for a family there are a couple of stages that we need to go through right filling out the information like of of ourselves if it's for a family then just filling out a couple of parameters in it and just moving ahead right so at the at, at the end of you know the steps like step one your information step two what kind of information you need to coverage for your uh, budget or in line and you know so on and so forth so when you reach at the end end stage right so so you you get a pdf conversion of whatever information you have filled in previous steps right so in that pdf conversions right so the pdf conversion they were using a vulnerable li library called as a pdf viewer right so that particular library itself contain severe you know vulnerabilities if you could just go it go on the google and just search for that library name and then specific version of it you would find that it's been vulnerable for tons of other attacks so just try you know escalating it to ssr just leading just to see where it goes right so there was this parameter uh, called as an uh, name parameter where i could basically was able to inject the i frames in it just to check the ssrf console of it right so made an out of band call first line of ssrf was uh, pretty much you know successful with the help of box with collaborator and then further when i got to know that it is so it was giving me uh, some sort of id that was a hint that it has been hosted on an aws cloud right so further i went into inject the uh aws metadata url with the help of the metadata url i was just trying to know whether i'm in an active aws environment state or not so it so basically uh, how ssr works is like you have an outside asset with the help of which you try to gain access to the internal resources so for me the application was the external asset for me with the help of which i was able to gain uh, the internal resource access that was hosted on aws so that was one of the pretty uh, that example of uh, uh, like prevention measures and why there is a need uh, to you know perform these kinds of activities right attack simulation is like pretty much you can call this uh, you can also you know go for testing simulation attack is like much uh, much uh, of much importance i would say because people are still unaware of certain cases in which how they could be a target for a testing simulation attack right um, and then there are other compliance measures as well which i believe are uh, the compliance and operations teams to you know work together on to uh, sharing like awareness within and the entire departments of what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to security and that's how this this particular layer actually works uh, and then we have another layer called as an operations layer so operations layer it, it basically just uh, it's more of a like you know Uh, having a constant observations of the enterprise then um, with a with a keen eye coupled with the right tools and process 
to recognize incidents and events and respond accordingly in a timely manner. So it does include uh, SIEM, which is uh, which is which is a uh, security operations tool that has a con that that pretty much gives you a complete visibility of what what's exactly happening on uh, like with the entire organization. There are certain events that could have been triggered, just verifying whether it's a false positive or it needs an immediate action on it, right? And if certain or the other events happen, so how 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 are we investigating it, right? So what what are the procedures for it? Like how you should you know take care of when such such as when certain other events occur, right? So it's basically comprises of all the monitoring and response part, uh, which 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 pretty much involves continuous logging and monitoring, right? And 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 also having a complete visibility on the attack surface, right? So we're gonna cover this topic deep in the uh in in the up upcoming slides as we discussed previously. And uh, let's let's move on to the next slide. Yeah. So why uh, application security is important? So as we have discussed earlier as well, so uh, like a couple of years ago, uh, I, I would say decade decade ago, there was the, like the security the, the security aspect was like like the like people used to put in like very minimal efforts into uh, you know configuring the devices, uh, ensuring that the network connectivity. And these certain other parts are like appropriate up and running for the business to to you know function smoothly, right? So sudden as as there are you know uh, more and more challenges every organization was facing. So there I mean there was a need for technologies to evolve and come up, right? So with that particular evolving technologies, right? It has been I mean the evolving technology has led to rising many secure security vulnerabilities. So we have also I like heard news in like uh, when we were in COVID period and also after that in 2022. So the the databases that happened, the those were like uh, more than um, 73 CR, right? So 73 CRs of the data were breached, right? And in 2023, the number has raised to 85. 85 crores of data has been breached as of uh, August 2023, right? So there was a small research. Uh, that was uh, done by Veracode, and according to their research, what they have identified, uh, key uh, 85 85,000 of applications has major flaws. Like 83 percent of total 85,000 applications has like severe flaws in applications, whereas the remaining 70 percent had at least had like one severe risk vulnerability found within the applications, right? So the reason the applications are uh, becoming more vulnerable is to not having you know, appropriate awareness of how to write a secure code, not following the best practices, not following the DevSecOps cycle, right? And uh, and and since since every every business wants to you know go digital and wants to you know do some sort of marketing just to you know be known in 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 public, right? So the assets of every organization of they are using, right? It's easily available on the internet. All we have to do is just use. The use or use the couple of you know information gathering tools, and you'll have the results of like whichever target you wish to you know have information for. So it's like listing all the assets, listing all their IP addresses, listing what all applications that they have, listing what all technologies they have, listing what all uh, framework that they have been using. You know, you can get hold of all these information. You can also get a hold of the AS and IPs that you're using to have the connection between two remote locations, right? Uh, other than that, if you would just do some sort of social, uh, you know, engineering kind of thing for that particular target, you could also find a bunch of stuff on social media platforms as well, right? So the reason of uh, being used of social platform is that you can get some of the other information related to the employees who are working with that particular organization. So you can make them as your target and you can perform simulation, uh, phishing simulation, phishing attacks onto that particular employees. And then you can try to, you know, gain some, some of the other access for using those techniques as well, right? So application security is like crucial in today's uh, digital landscape uh, as it protects both individuals and organizations from a wide range of cyber threats, right? Uh, let's let's move on to the next slide of to see uh, the importance of, I mean, why, why do we need application security, right?
so protecting sensitive data so like application security is like uh, is like is like the wallet that protects your digital wealth so imagine uh, imagine a banking application that you are using and that that fails to have appropriate security measures and if you are just using that application alongside for each and every transaction and say for example if there is one particular uh, flaw of not uh, verifying the the transaction id and an attacker can replay the same transaction using a transaction id if it gets hold of, of that particular api right so the attacker could literally gain access to uh, a user's financial data leading to disastrous consequences right so another reason of to having an application security is important in place is preventing the data breaches right so as so as we have discussed the as of august 2023 83 crores of data breaches has been reported right so if if uh, if we do not want to you know be uh, like being in an working in an organizational level if we do not want to be a part of it right so we we need to safeguard our applications and uh, we need to have we need to follow the appropriate security measures that needs to be you know implemented right and most of the data breach that, that has occurred those those are due to unpatched software uh, and uh, leading to you know compromising the personal information of like over uh, 143 millions of people right uh, there wasn't recent case of last pass uh, uh, even cyber cyber attack as well so last pass is uh, like password managing company based in us and uh, the only the only flaw that that particular company had was one of its developer fell for a phishing attack right leading i mean and and that led to compromising that particular developer's credentials over to an attacker so attacker created a phishing page sent an email to that particular developer without the knowledge of verifying the email address where it came from why like raising questions and reporting it to the it it team the developer instantly just clicked onto the phishing link that was present in the email and then end up providing uh, its own credentials of where these uh, you know source code repository were right to the attacker so the so the attacker was able to actually grab a couple of hard coded passwords in it but luckily uh, i mean the reputational damage for last pass company was like a bit of an like it reduced because they were having a master password for for their for their customers as well so so they were dealing with like 1.5 millions of customers are all around the globe and uh, and and so, so luckily the attacker was not able to get a hold of the master password but the password that the attacker was able to get a hold of was the uh, was of their own organization so it's like having the uh, the attacker could you know gain gain access to all the passwords of the internal employees only so so that was one of the case so how to uh, i mean it's it's, a, it's also important to maintain customers trust right so with an example of last pass so it was like a pretty challenging for 1. Uh, 1.5 millions of customers who used a last pass uh, tool for maintaining the passwords right so it's uh, it's really important to you know maintain the customers trust right so customers trust is like hard earned and easily lost so we need to like have a security measures and controls in place according to that so Uh, let's let's move on to the next point that is compliance requirements uh so, so as we were discussing so we have come across a couple of uh, uh, cyber attacks right we have also discussed one or two and uh, here are here are another example that i have listed on the screen so if you see there are i mean most of it does include uh, of like the information does include on the data breaches right so the data data breaches like expose an information from more than 50000 customers and then the, there was a pretty big attack or fraud on that, that that was made on twitter that confirms the data from 5 5.4 million accounts were stolen and asked for 30 30000 of ransom say right? and then there are then there is an another headline that uh, focuses on Uh, the attempt of an attacker to sell data of 500 millions of whatsapp users onto the dark web right and then there are another one uh, wherein an 
Indian Airlines flight jack faced an attempted ransomware attack in March 2022, leaving hundreds of passengers stranded in several locations in the country. Okay. And then there are a couple of latest attacks as well that uh, took in uh, June 2022 and a couple of in March and February as well. So, so move it application it occurred in June 2023. So it was a so it, it was kind of a, like the mass hack of file transfer tool. So move it has impacted like more more than 200 organizations and uh, up to like 17.5 million individuals as of July 2023. And uh, there were like multiple uh, federal agencies uh, like those were affected as well uh, in this particular attack. Um, and, and it also included uh, some of the departments of energy, agriculture, health and human services, right? Uh, then, there, then there was another uh, attack called as in T-Mobile, which occurred in uh, May 2023. Uh, so, so, it, so, so it actually happened in January 2023, but it was announced in May 2023. So T-Mobile basically suffered its second data breach uh, in 2023 after a hack was revealed. And after the hack was revealed, uh, so it, the, the data breach contains of like the pins number, uh, the customer's full names, mobile numbers, and, and uh, the, that, that breach basically affected like 800 customers. Uh, and then there is one famous uh, uh, attack that took place in March 2023. I'm sure you all must be aware of chat GPT. So chat GPT has also been subjected to a public disclosure, public disclosure. Uh, because of its re uh, revol revolutionary AI capabilities, uh, the company faced a, a, a pretty uh, a, a pretty good setback in uh, late March um, when they announced a data breach. Uh, like, uh, and the official from OpenAI and ChatGPT's parent company said that uh, so in the hours before we took like before they took ChatGPT offline. Uh, it was it was possible for some of the users to see another user's active uh, first name and then last name, email addresses and then the payment addresses. Uh, I mean the the credit card number, uh, right? So like imagine having a dump of the data for all the users who has used who, who are an active user of ChatGPT and getting in hold of the credit card number, right? So it was a minor setback for ChatGPT, but that's now, I mean, it has been fixed and taken care, care of, right? Uh, and then there is one, another high profile data breach as well, that's of Google Spice. I'm sure you are aware of it. So it it's, uh, so it, it's, a, it's a consequence of the T-Mobile data breach that had happened, right? So because Google doesn't have its own network infrastructure, right? So they piggyback on T-Mobile's network and were affected by their massive data breach. Com uh, comprising the uh, customer's details. So that does include a couple of sensitive information that all the users used to, you know, um, uh, get get themselves one of the Google's accounts, right? So, so these, these are pretty pretty much of the recent uh, recent cyber attacks. Uh, let's let's move on to the next one. So as as we were discussing, like uh, why applications are facing. Or, or why applications are vulnerable to severe cyber attacks or, the, or, or severe vulnerabilities. So, so like making very common coding mistakes, like you know, not using components with known, uh, sorry, using components with known vulnerabilities. So, uh, whenever there is a project that needs to be developed and uh, needs to be made live in a certain you know intervals of time, so uh, the recent procedure that's been handed on to the developer. So, what developer developer nowadays does is without I mean, they do not sit and write entire code from scratch, right? If they need, uh, like, like just for example, if they if they need to uh, have certain functions that makes an you know agents call to the backend server, so they would not sit and write an entire code for it. They would just go ahead, find some JavaScript library for it, right? That does you know the job of calling the agents functions from the backend server and then you know making making the further actions. So what they so what they do is literally. They go onto the uh, you know internet. They find for the JS or any suitable library that does the job for them. They do not see which particular uh, authorized uh, you know people have posted that particular code onto the code snippet onto the internet. They just go, they, they just blindly copy paste that insert it, insert that into their code and then the work continues further. Right. 
so 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 this is like the very very and most common mistake every developer does nowadays uh, just for example that we also talked about uh, of using a vulnerable pdf uh, converter that led to ssrf that led to remote code execution as well because i was able to literally get a hold of one of their ec2 instance on which the applications were on which that particular application banking application was running so you can just imagine the like severity and impact of like not using uh, components which are verified which are uh, non vulnerable and which is uh, which is authentic right i mean the source of it is authentic right uh, and also in the upcoming that i'm going to show you a quick demo uh, i mean uh, yeah a quick demo on the vulnerable library part that falls under uh, supply proper supply chain attack right so so uh, so using components with known vulnerability can severely lead to uh, multiple you know vulnerabilities i mean it could be a chaining of multiple vulnerability into creating an impactful attack right not using appropriate security headers so there are like couple of you know standard of uh, uh, security header that has also been mentioned in oap top 10 and that needs to be followed and which which needs to be appropriately configured and implemented but some of them you know make a mistake while implementing it by not having appropriate maybe access header in place or making some mis misconfigurations in implementing a csp header that is content security policy header that basically helps to prevent sort of access and other javascript related attacks right and when it when it uh, comes to a web application so if you would see many of the web application intends to throw an error that that basically disclose some of the other internal uh, maybe a, a file name or maybe an entire path of where but where uh, the error has been logged and been showing you at the uh, you know front end on your browser or basically just disclosing what the back end server and uh, the back end framework is being used right so the lack of not you know having appropriate error pages configured that that particular leads to you know some i mean it it basically gives an hint or 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 an open open instance for an attacker to you know perform some sort of focus attacks right so if there is a disclosure of some sort of uh, uh internal files or maybe a file name one can just go ahead and try directly traversing for it they like could could try for lfi local file inclusion could also uh, you know try for uh, directory listing kind of an attack right? so it is very crucial for for uh, developers to not disclose any 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 sorts of any sorts of sensitive data while throwing an error message to the user right so the uh, error messages should be like very generic and 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 ez404 not found could could also work or any any standard these right uh so next next if if there are like server version disclosure that also like gives an attacker you know a visibility to perform further targeted attacks right a uh, direct url access without having appropriate subject and object matrix or validations in place so what i mean by subject and object matrix validations in place so for example if um, if i am the subject right and if i should only have access to uh, oaps platform uh, sorry I enter to interrupt you uh, like Yeah. we are running late uh, so we uh, have yeah. like 2 minutes uh, like after that we have qa &E. so if you can wrap up in 2 minutes it will be good yeah yeah sure uh, so uh, yeah so we were talking about subject and object matter validation in place so for so say for example if i am uh, a subject who only has who who is supposed to only have access to oaps.com that that's my object so say for example Uh, validations are not in appropriate validations are not in place so i could just easily brute force it and force you know browse to have access to certain another internal resources as well that in lies with oaps.com right and then there are priority escalation that does happen of with because the lack of subject and object vector validation in place we cryptography in, in use using you know known and dep deprecated hashing algorithms known and known and de deprecated uh, cryptographic you know al algorithms in place and using a complexity of uh, you know cryptography like having a, having cryptography done at client side right which could uh, i mean that gives an indication 
uh, for for an attacker to basically understand the logic of how the en encryption is happening and then you know uh, uh, alterate it, alterate the values before using the developer's tool, iterate some of the other values and then inject own malicious scripts into it and then have it passed onto the further encryption and decryption part for the gaining another asset to some of the other resources, right? So these are some common mistakes that developers, I mean, which which we really find in uh, while while performing, you know, our penetration testing. Uh, can you move on to the next slide, please? So application security problems, there are uh, like lack of awareness on application security part, not following appropriate security requirements, right? Uh, having bad programming practices, using of heavy payload encryption, like a uh, heavy use of payload, payload encryption is more, more of like uh, using encryption on the client side, exposing all the logic and keys onto the client side, having it hard coded in one of the public static JavaScript files, right? That, that leads to further uh, unauthorized access to uh, internal resources and everything, right? Uh, can you move on to the next slide, please? Uh, so this is a, so this is one of the uh, like it's 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 been taken off uh, off on the internet, but I just love this part uh, like the entire uh, this thing of it because uh, like here in, I mean if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not to fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gain, you will also suffer a defeat. You will succumb in every battle if you know neither the enemy nor yourself. So if you just, you know, have this related to in terms of cyber security. So knowing the enemy. So it's like in cyber security, the enemy, it represents threat actors such as hackers, cyber criminals, and malicious entities, right? So understanding that tactics, techniques, and motivation is like crucial because this knowledge allows an organization and an individual to anticipate and defend against specific threats effectively. So for example, knowing that a particular hacker group is like specializes in ransomware attacks. So, so this particular piece of information will help an organization to focus on implementing defenses and backup stra strategies to mitigate this particular threat, right? Uh, when I mean knowing yourself, so in, in cyber security term, knowing yourself, it, it means like having a deep understanding of your organization's digital assets vulnerabilities and the security posture, right? So this includes knowing what data you have, where it's located, and what security measures are in place. So for example, understanding uh, that your organization stores some sort of sensitive data in a particular database, that, that should allow you to prioritize the security measures for that asset only, right? And uh, what I mean, like balancing both, like effectively, uh, uh, like it, like the effective cybersecurity requires a balance between knowing the enemy and then knowing yourself. So without the knowledge of the enemy, right, you might not recognize when a threat is approaching or understand its potential impact. Without knowing yourself, you might have the security measures in place, but the lack of insight to deploy them where they are most needed, right? So by knowing both the enemy's tactics and your own vulnerabilities, you can proactively patch software vulnerabilities before they can be exploited. So this is, the, uh, I mean, what I just like the most uh, whenever the server the internet, so I just thought to add it on this uh, slide, right? Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? Uh, so software composition analysis. So this is something that I uh, wanted to discuss. Uh, so we so we all know what is a software composition analysis, right? Uh, so it is it is basically an automated uh, process that identifies the open source software in a code base. Right? So we have discussed earlier that developers sometimes just you know grab down to a couple of code or library and just import it into the code, right? So this analysis is performed to evaluate the uh, security aspect of the library being used, the license, like whether whether it's using an appropriate license or not, so it, whether it is a license compliant or not and the code quality of it, right? So every organization need need to be aware of open source license limitations and obligations, right? So uh, tracking this, these obligations manually become, so it, it, it's like too too difficult. I mean, it, it's like a difficult task, right? And and, and it is often overlooked uh, uh, when, when, when we're doing an assessment for it, right? So it is very crucial for every, uh, organization to have a complete visibility of what all third party libraries they are using, the licensing part of it, and whether they are compliant to the standard infosec policy that, that we uh, have in our organization planning, right? So basically how does how does software analysis work? So this particular tool, it inspects the package managers, Hello. the manifest files. 
sorry and uh, we have to stop you here uh, it's time for the second session oh, okay sure oh uh, so thanks a lot for joining us and giving your precious time uh, and highlighting us with such a great knowledge so once again thanks a lot thank you thank you